Generally in fantasy stories, there seems to be a heavy emphasis on fighting. This is probably because a good story needs a good conflict, and conflict resolution in fantasy stories mostly comes down to blasting each other with magic or hacking away with various forms of medieval weaponry. I guess you'll occasionally come across a story that includes diplomacy too, but you'll never see the main villain dealt with at the negotiating table. Today, I'll be reviewing something of an anomaly to the fantasy genre, a story that has no violence in which all disputes are solved through games. May I introduce No Game, No Life. The protagonists of our story are a brother-sister pair, Sora and Shiro, who do nothing but play video games all day and all night as a team. As this team, they have achieved legendary status among the gaming community as Blank, a gamer who's at the top rank of hundreds of games and has never lost a match. This attracts the attention of a god from another dimension, Tet, who after playing chess against the pair and losing, summons them to his world, Discord, so he can have a rematch. Quick backstory on Discord. In ancient times, there was a great war between the gods and the 15 races below them because, you know, what fantasy world would be complete without an epic ancient war? Anyways, after everyone was either dead or exhausted, Tet, the god of games who'd sat the war out, told everyone that they were idiots and proclaimed himself the sole ruler of the world. He then created rules such that no one can hurt each other and everything and anything in the world is decided by the results of games. If bandits want to rob you, they have to challenge you to a game. If a country wants to conquer its neighbor's territory, well then, that can be achieved by beating them at a game. And hell, you can even become god by playing games. Naturally, after arriving in this world, our protagonist gamers, who have never lost a match, decide that the only sensible course of action is to take over the world and challenge god. We, as readers, get the pleasure of watching them do it. Our two protagonists, Sora and Shiro, are 18 and 11 respectively, and despite their age gap, they have a very close relationship. So close, in fact, that if they get too far apart from each other, they pretty much cease to function. I'd love to say that there's no trace of an incestuous relationship between the two, but I'd be lying. There are a number of fairly explicit hints littered throughout the novel that Shiro is romantically interested in Sora. Luckily, they're not actually blood related and nothing happens because of the age gap, but we do get the lovely only seven more years quote from Shiro. Anyways, ignoring the relationship stuff, Sora is a fairly geeky perverted virgin who's great at reading others but less good at interacting with them. And Shiro is an introverted genius who's far less innocent than she pretends to be. The rest of the cast forms what I would call a faux harem. With two exceptions, the main cast is entirely female, but not all of them are falling head over heels in love with Sora. Only some. We have a human princess, Steph, Elven noble Fee, her servant Karami, crazy death angel Jibril, war beast ambassador Izuna, and so on and so forth. Initially, a lot of these characters, when introduced, fulfill fairly shallow roles like comic relief, fan service, and aww, so cute. Luckily, the author does expand these roles later in the series, and the characters begin to get their own stories outside of their relationship with Sora and Shiro. As one would hope from a series called No Game No Life, the best part of the series is watching the games play out. While many of the games that are played already exist in real life, there's always a creative twist to them which makes things more interesting. From playing chess with pieces that have consciences, to shiratori or word connector where the words spoken cause things to appear or disappear. Also, because cheating is fine as long as you don't get caught, almost everyone cheats. This coupled with the playstyle of Sora and Shiro, which can only be termed as unorthodox, makes for great amusement and some pretty tense matches. Another thing that I think is great that this story does is taking some time to go into politics, governance, and espionage. While taking over the world and winning games is nice and all, Sora and Shiro also do make an effort to make sure that their new empire is well administered and that they deal with rival nations they're not actually ready to game with. Given that a number of regions are on the verge of collapse, and for various reasons most of the races seem to have a mutual hatred of each other, this is a difficult task to say the least. Watching Sora and Shiro and their companions deal with these issues is just as interesting as watching the games themselves. My biggest complaint about No Game No Life is the excess amount of time spent on fan service. My general policy about fan service is that I have absolutely no problem with it if it doesn't interrupt the story. 
As such, I don't particularly mind when people get partially stripped while a game is going on, even if it happens rather too frequently. It does bug me though when you have another naked bath scene for literally every character that's introduced, along with a number of other random etchy scenes. Honestly, I don't need to hear another breast size comparison conversation, and I really don't want to know how Shiro pretends to be asleep whilst listening to Sora jack off. Ugh. Anyways, other than that, I don't have any other real complaints other than the continued mistreatment of one particular character that I feel rather sorry for. That's just a personal gripe with the story though. It is nice for once to read a fantasy story without combat, and equally nice to have a story about games that does not either involve getting stuck in them or trying to sell tied in merchandise. In no way does No Game No Life ever take itself seriously, but if you're looking for a fun read, then it's fully worthwhile checking out. For scores, I give it a 7 out of 10 for plot, 8 out of 10 for characters, 9 out of 10 for quality of prose, and an 8.5 out of 10 for my own personal enjoyment giving No Game No Life an overall score of 8.125 out of 10. If you've already watched the anime adaptation of it, and are wondering where to pick up the light novel, I would suggest starting at Volume 3, Chapter 4. The anime technically covers up to the end of Volume 3, but they changed some stuff right at the end so they could have a BS cliffhanger ending. If you've already read all of No Game No Life that's been translated and are looking for something else to read till the next chapter is translated, I have two suggestions. Neki Magister Nagima, a series that has all the same fantasy harem fanservice thing going on, and Dog Horizon for those who are looking for a story with more emphasis on strategy, politics, and governments. And with that, I'm done this review. Thanks for listening. Cheers!